Hello. Well, you're probably aware that there's some fairly wet and windy weather across southern parts as we go through the end of Wednesday and into Thursday. But what does next week have in store? Well, it's, I'd say it's looking quite changeable. But currently, the jet stream, it's fairly strong just to the south of the UK. And it's this jet that's driving a deepening area of low pressure that's pushing across the channel and is going to deepen further as it heads towards the North Sea as we go through, yes, Wednesday into Thursday. Now, this feature has been named Storm Benjamin, but it was named by Meteor France, the French meteorological office. That's because it's in northern France where we're going to see the greatest impacts, the strongest winds. Nonetheless, across parts of England and Wales, especially towards the south and, and the east, there's heavy rain, there's strong winds. We're talking 30 to 50 millimetres in some places, gusts of 60, perhaps 70, maybe even a little bit stronger than that down the eastern side of the UK. If you want more information about Storm Benjamin, check our daily weather videos because I want to get on to what the next 10 days have in store. Later Thursday and as we go into Friday, Benjamin does clear out towards the east, but we end up in the, the backwash of it. So there will be some showers still piling in across eastern parts of the country as we go into Friday. And there are some question marks as to exactly how quickly Benjamin clears away. And that's partly because it hasn't actually deepened fully yet. And so there's always going to be some uncertainty as to exactly how deep it's going to get and how quickly it's going to move through until it reaches its deepest phase. As a result, Question marks as to exactly how much rain there's going to be over eastern parts of Scotland. I'll have more information about that in a second. There's also uh, an, another cutoff low that develops and that pushes across parts of Northern Ireland. And that will bring some showery rain across Northern Ireland, feeding into western parts of England and Wales as we go through Friday as well. But let's look at that rain across eastern parts of Scotland. And I mentioned there's some uncertainty about it. So. The Met Office model does want to bring some rain across eastern parts of Scotland, also bring some showers across parts of Northern Ireland, Wales and Western England too. Here I have my 36 hour rainfall through the Friday and into Saturday and you can see, yeah, it's fairly wet across eastern parts of Scotland. But ECMWF, the European model, has nowhere near as much rain across eastern parts of Scotland. Much drier, yes, there'll be some rain around, but less likely to be impactful. However, if we look at GFS, the American model, well, this paints a much wetter picture. Across northern and eastern Scotland, the rain could be impactful if this came off. And worth bearing in mind that actually previous Met Office model runs had uh, something a bit similar to the GFS model. So, most likely, there will be some wet weather across eastern parts of Scotland. Probably won't be especially impactful, but we need to keep a close eye on it because it's not out of the question that uh, Benjamin takes a little bit longer to clear through. And so we see that rain continuing, pushing a bit further west at times. And so we could see some impacts from the heavy rain, uh, particularly across northern and eastern parts of Scotland as we go through Friday and into Saturday. The other thing that Benjamin does as it clears away is it changes our wind direction. So as we go through Friday night into Saturday, we're going to end up with a northerly flow bringing cold Arctic air across the country. Now, as you would expect, that Arctic air is going to lead to our temperatures dropping. You can really see that cold air plunging its way southwards across most parts. And there will still be brisk, strong winds around. Notice the isobars still quite tightly packed because of Benjamin, even though it's clearing away. And with those blustery winds and that cold Arctic air, well, it's really going to feel quite raw, quite chilly and cold as we go through into this weekend. Let's look at our freezing level. With that colder air that's coming through, our freezing level is important. Now, this is the height of which temperatures are zero degrees above sea level. And this plays an important role as to whether any precipitation we see comes in the form of rain or sleet and snow. Now, as we go through the day, you can see the freezing level is dropping across the country, but notably across parts of Scotland, it's dropping to around four, 500 meters up. And we do have high ground higher than that, significantly higher than that. And so there's a, a reasonable chance that we're going to see a bit of sleet and snow over the higher ground of Scotland, much less likely further south. The other thing with that cold air that's coming through on Saturday, it, it could be quite a chilly start on Saturday morning, a bit chillier than some recent mornings, but worth factoring in still those blustery winds that I mentioned. And so they'll keep temperatures dropping too low for now. But nonetheless, a, a bit of a chilly start could be some isolated pockets of frost where we get clear skies and you're in the shelter from the wind. But I think what you want to know about is that sleet and snow I mentioned. As we go through Saturday, then showers coming down from the north. Now, 
they're going to be most frequent in places exposed to that northerly wind, so across parts of Scotland, also parts of Northern Ireland and North Sea coastal parts, some feeding into coastal parts of Wales and southwest England as well. But it's across Scotland where there's the greatest chance of seeing some sleet and snow. Now, it's not going to be especially heavy. It's not going to be impactful. It's nothing out of the ordinary for this time of year. But yes, I think over the highlands, the Grampians, there's a reasonable chance of seeing some sleet, some snow mixed in with those showers. So if you're heading to the hills, heading to the mountains, maybe you'll, you'll see some. Further south, uh, whilst the, wet, well, the freezing level is dropping as well, we're also a bit more sheltered from the, uh, the northerly wind, and so we're less likely to see those showers piling in. So the higher ground over parts of northern England, less likely to see any sleet or snow, maybe over Snowdonia, possibly. You could see a little bit, but it's really going to be over the, the higher ground over northern parts of Scotland, especially. Now, I have our temperatures on for Saturday here. They are a little bit lower than during much of this week. High single figures, just about getting into double digits, so a chilly feel. But when we factor in those winds that I mentioned, well, it's going to feel quite raw. Some places towards northern and eastern parts of Scotland feeling close to freezing. And uh, even elsewhere, it's going to be a chilly, markedly changed feel to things compared to what we've had recently. Then later Saturday into Sunday, we have kind of a calm setup Saturday night into Sunday, and we still have that cold air across us. But through Sunday itself, a weather system is likely to push in from the northwest. Some uncertainty as to exactly how quickly this is going to arrive, but nonetheless, it's set to turn things cloudier, a bit wetter, and also uh, lifting our temperatures. But it's going to take a little while for that to happen. As a result, Sunday morning looks pretty chilly, probably chillier than on Saturday morning. Some places, rural areas, could see temperatures several degrees below freezing, minus three, minus four, that kind of thing. And so uh, a bit of frost looks quite likely in rural spots and even towns and cities. It's going to feel pretty chilly because there'll be more dry, clear weather around and the winds will be slightly lighter than on Saturday morning as well. But it's going to be a, a bright, fine start for quite a few places. Uh, a lot of dry weather, just a few showers towards the west. However, then with that weather system that's coming in, we are going to see the cloud thickening and we're going to see some rain pushing in as well. As I mentioned, though, there's some uncertain as to exactly how quickly that's going to push through. The Met Office model brings it in a bit quicker than some of the others, and so it may take a little bit longer than the graphics behind me suggest for that rain to push across parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland, and into northern and western parts of England and Wales. Still a chilly feel to things. I mentioned the temperatures are rising, but because of the chilly start and the cloud that's then coming in during the daytime, that's going to keep anything from really becoming much milder than on Saturday. So again, another chilly day, albeit the winds perhaps are ever so slightly less strong. So maybe feeling slightly less raw, I suppose. But this is the 10 day trend. So let's look further ahead and go through what we're expecting through next week, which is half term for many places. And it's a bit uncertain at times, as you would expect at this time of year with this sort of lead time. But the most likely setup from the Met Office model has the low pressure that ha will have pushed through on Saturday, Sunday time uh, to be drifting away towards the east. And uh, that's the similar setup that we have on Tuesday as well. And so there'll be some wet weather around, but it doesn't look especially impactful, just a bit changeable, really, as we go through the early part of next week and still a bit on the chilly side. However, as we go towards the middle of the week, and that's when there's a bit more uncertainty, but I think a bit of a transition perhaps between uh, something, the mobile setup that we have to start off with to something a bit quieter during the middle of the week, but then there's more changeable weather waiting out in the west. And then that's what we take through as we go through Thursday and then also into Friday. Now, I want to show this in a slightly different way. In order to do that, I have the Met Office model at the top and then the ECMWF model at the bottom and run them through for next week. Now, to start off with, not a huge amount of difference. Low pressure towards the uh, northeast of us and higher pressure trying to build in from the west-southwest. But as we head towards the middle of the week, that's when we start to see some discrepancies between the two of them. Now, the Met Office model has low pressure towards the northwest of the UK, pushing across towards the north. And so that goes in the line with the idea of some changeable weather towards the northwest, but there's higher pressure towards the south, so something a bit drier towards the south, quite likely. ECMWF, however, has that high pressure, that ridge, a bit more amplified, so that suggests that we could actually have some largely fine, quiet weather as we go through the middle of next week. Uh, it looks a fair bit quieter than the Met Office model. But 
as we run through later on. And there are some differences as to exactly what the low pressures do towards the north of the UK. But by the end of the week, actually, it looks relatively similar in some respect. There's low pressure nearby, but one thing that we can take away from it is whilst the low pressure to the west of the UK, it's a bit closer if we look at Met Office model, it's a bit further away if we look at ECMWF. And so, you know, Met Office model would paint it being relatively unsettled, whereas ECMWF would have it a bit quieter. What they're both in line with is the change in our wind direction, and we'd be dragging in our air from the south. And so things could warm up, things could turn a bit milder as we go through next week. Now, another way that we can look at all of this, this is our probabilistic pressure trend, and it shows whether low pressure, high pressure, more likely as we go through the next two weeks. The blues indicating low pressure generally, so, you know, fairly standard autumnal weather, there'll be low pressure nearby, mobile setup really, with weather coming in from the west, northwest, so some rain at times, some blustery winds, but it doesn't look especially severe. And actually, the signal weakens. I guess as you would expect as we go further ahead, but particularly from the, well, Tuesday onwards, the difference between Monday and Tuesday is quite marked. So less strong signal for low pressure to be dominant. We can see that as well if we look at our zonal trend. So whether our air is coming from the west or from the east. And again, westerly looks pretty strong to start next week, but from the middle of the week, it kind of weakens really. And so less strong a signal. But the one that I wanted to highlight really is our meridional trend. So whether our air is coming from the north or from the south. And We've got it coming from the north at the moment, really so as we go through into this weekend, which is why temperatures are dropping. But uh, during the middle part of next week, it looks like it's going to change. We're going to get a southerly flow, and so that's going to lead to our temperatures rising. We can also see that if we look at our meteograms from ECMWF for our capital cities, they drop down well below average. Let's look at London, actually. It paints the story quite nicely. It drops down well below average as we go through into this weekend. Saturday, Sunday, both by day and by night, will be marked colder than normal for the time of year. But as we go through next week, all of them in agreement. Uh, and whilst there is some spread, because, you know, you would expect that for several uh, a week or so away, it, there's strong signs that we are going to see temperatures really rising as we go through the back end of next week and head towards Halloween. So in summary, through next week, quite a mobile setup to start off with, and there probably will be more changeable weather at times as we go through towards the end of the week. Uh, so yes, some rain, some stronger winds, but also some drier weather. Perhaps the middle of the week looks a little bit drier and calmer. And one thing that I'm a bit more confident about is the fact that temperatures are set to rise. Obviously, with all of that, details will firm up as we get nearer the time. So make sure you stay across our YouTube channel, and then you'll uh, never miss one of our updates. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.